An actor's life is often exciting, but with notoriously unpredictable work, it can be frightening. The Screen Actors Guild Foundation is a nonprofit organization dedicated to providing free programs that assist, educate, and inspire actors. In its commitment to inspire, the Screen Actors Guild Foundation has invested in an actor's center. The center will provide editing facilities, computer terminals, a screening room, and more. The Conversations program brings in well-known working actors to share their experiences in the industry. The Foundation films and archives these events to preserve the knowledge for years to come. The Casting Access Project offers SAG members the opportunity to demystify the audition process and share their performances with casting directors. The Life Raft Program offers panel discussions with industry professionals on the business of acting. Knowledge is power. The Foundation helps actors navigate an uncertain world with programs that give financial assistance to members of the Screen Actors Guild. Due to a rare and painful blood disease, Academy Award-nominated actress Susan Terrell had to have her legs amputated in April of 2000. With the help provided under the Foundation's Catastrophic Health Fund, Susan was able to walk again within two months. She has become an avid painter and a model builder. The Foundation also encourages actors to give back to their communities by supporting educational, philanthropic, and outreach programs such as Book Pals, in which actors share the joy of the written word by reading aloud to children across the country. Storyline Online presents well-known actors reading children's literature on the internet. The art of acting has a rich history, and the Screen Actors Guild Foundation is committed to preserving it. Learn about this inspiring history in the SAG documentary, Behind the Masks. Attend a Foundation event, volunteer for our programs, make a tax-deductible donation, or join our Have a Seat campaign to support the state-of-the-art Actor Center. All these programs are presented at no cost to the actor. The Screen Actors Guild Foundation is solely supported through grants, donations, and corporate sponsorship. The Foundation remains independently committed to making the life of an actor a little less frightening and a lot more exciting. Hi, I'm SAG Foundation President and SAG National Board Member, Joe Beth Williams. And I'm SAG Secretary Treasurer, Amy Aquino, along with SAG President, Ken Howard. It's our pleasure to extend a warm online welcome to the SAG membership joining us for this seminar. We're excited to bring you valuable business of acting knowledge in this Life Raft live stream event. And remember, you're a part of this event. Any time during the live program, you can email your questions to the moderator at liferaft at sagfoundation.org or tweet your questions using the hashtag LRLS. And let us know your first name and your city too. When you have finished viewing this live raft event, please make sure to fill out the anonymous online survey on the viewing page. Your feedback is crucial to the growth of this innovative program. Before we dive in, it's important to note that the SAG Foundation is a nonprofit organization funded solely by grants and donations, not by guild membership dues. So, if you would like to help support the Foundation's dedication to assisting, educating, and inspiring actors, go to the SAG Foundation website and click on the pink Donate Now button on the right-hand side of the page to make a tax-deductible gift. Now, sit back, relax, and take notes. And in case you miss anything, each live stream seminar will be archived in the SAG Foundation video gallery. Thanks for joining us. The SAG Foundation and the Screen Actors Guild are moving you full stream ahead.
Ag Foundation. Say my name three times, you'll be vocally warmed up for any commercial audition. I'd like to make a uh, warm welcome to our online members joining us tonight. Thank you for coming. A quick thanks to the SAG Foundation, the staff, and the uh, Screen Actors Guild for a wonderful partnership in this program to bring the Life Raft Business of Acting programs to members nationally. Uh, thank you to SAG and the SAG Foundation. Quick disclaimer, we'll get going. Everything we're presenting tonight does not necessarily mean an endorsement by SAG or the SAG Foundation. Anything that means is of importance to you, we advise you to seek your own counsel, make your own decision, basically. Thanks for coming tonight, and tonight's moderator for an evening with commercial casting directors is Bjorn Johnson. I'll, qu I'll read quickly. Uh, Bjorn Johnson is an award-winning actor, director, producer, acting teacher, and fight choreographer in theater, film, and television. He has most recently starred in the stage play Educating Rita and guest starred in the critically acclaimed television shows ER, Mad Men, and Dexter. As a director, Bjorn Johnson was awarded the LA Weekly's Best Director Achievement for Dutchman. A master of the word, he has also perfected 10 accents. Wow, we're gonna hear those tonight. And four additional languages. And really quick, before I bring out Bjorn, we're also for your online guests who are emailing questions and Twittering them in, we will pick one randomly, you don't have to pay anything, to win this book, uh, Breaking Into Commercials by Terry Berlin, one of our casting directors tonight. We have a wonderful panel for you tonight and thank you to the casting directors and our moderator, Bjorn Johnson. Please welcome Bjorn. Good evening, good evening. Hi, God, who wrote that? <laughs> I'm gonna use an American accent tonight, and that's okay. And, uh, and hi to all you guys here. It's this incredible room, and aren't we glad that we're paying dues? And uh, that they're being used so well, and that they're doing this program. And I'm just really, I wanna I want say hello to you, and thank you guys for coming, and everyone that came to participate, and hello to everyone who's online. And here we are streaming uh, uh, around the world, apparently. So, uh, you know, hello in Chicago and New York and uh, warum sind Sie schlafen in Berlin? And uh, hey, Sandra Bullock can do it, I can, I can do it too. Um, so, uh, without much ado, we're gonna, we're gonna take these uh, questions that we've gotten from the internet and also from the, uh, the room here, and we have some really great people to talk to uh, who I know and, and admire greatly. So first of all, I'd like you guys to welcome Francine Selkirk Ackerman. Francine is renowned for casting uh, Coke and the Geico things that are so popular in Saturn and for running one of the funnest rooms in the city. So this is a Francine. And then also tonight we're lucky to have Daniela Eskenazi. <laughs> Danielle does those great VW commercials, 7 Up, Nike, and uh, ever so many others. They've only listed about three of them for each of these people. I know they've, they've, everyone here has done just is doing bazillions. So. It's great. Uh, we also have uh, Terry Berland. <laughs> Terry Berland's busy with McDonald's and Pepsi and Apple and ever so many others. And last but certainly not least, we've also got Jeff Gerard. <laughs> he does the Sizzler commercials and Captain Crunch, and this is really an incredibly uh, busy quartet of casting directors. So uh, I think we're going to have a great time. So strap on your uh, seat belts and, and let's Whoa, give her I a rip. Say something else. <laughs> so guys, thanks for coming. Thanks for being here. I'm delighted to see you. Uh, I know. I guess we all know each other at some Hi. point or another. So yeah, if you kick around long enough, it's one of the great things about acting in 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 uh, Los Angeles is you get to meet a lot of casting directors. So uh, let's begin. First of all, uh, let me just pitch one over. Uh, let's start with you, Jeff. Um, on a typical commercial, I think that a lot of actors don't appreciate this. How many submissions do you get for a, a given role in the commercial? In the old days or today? Let, let's hear both. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I started in the uh, early 80s and used to get maybe a couple of hundred to maybe 300 submissions per role. Now you have probably between 800 and 1500 per role. Yeah, just due to the fact that everything is online now. Yeah, did you say 2,500? I did. Yep, sometimes on a national, good national network spot for uh, a very strong, uh, you know, say 30 to 40 or 25 to 40 year olds that are, you know, uh, that's the demand age, I would have to say. Right. Um, 2,500 sometimes. Uh huh. Uh huh. It's a lot. So a when lot. you get that interview, please be there and be on time because it's really. Uh, it's a privilege for us to get the job, 
and it really should be a privilege for you to have the audition because there are so many people in your agency alone that would take that spot in a second. And you'd be surprised how many days we still have to call agents and say, we have a 20 minute gap here. What happened? We're missing so and so and so and so and so and so. Or at least just call your agent and let us know that yeah. you're late so we could um, supplement. Well, like uh, Terry, what does timeliness actually, is someone not being on time, mean on your end of things? Like we're, we are often aware that we're sitting in a line waiting to go in, but if you've got actors who are late for the slots that they're counting on, what does it do to you in the process? Um, sometimes for the first half hour of the audition, no one shows up. <laughs> and it's terrible because we are paid, budgets are small now, smaller than they used to be, so we don't have as many days to cast. And we have to come through for our clients. So if you don't show up and just say in the morning, um, we're quickly lining people up to fill in later on in the day. So it means that we don't know, you're coming later, so then we are slammed later in the day because the people who didn't come early come later, and it just, there's a potential to be a mess. So it is very important that you come on time or tell your agent so we can arrange things. Because and on it days is like organized. this with the weather too, it's like no one in California knows what to do when it rains. <laughs> you know, it's like. It's true. It's like uh, the yeah. people in New York, how yeah. hard do they have to I'm go to get Yorker, to an audition? So. You know, you go to subway, it's snowing, it's crazy, and they all show up. On what time. the hell's going on? Only, we only, in New York, we only have to get from the subway stop to the, <laughs> That's uh, true. To the but office But still, door, you're, so. you're there. <laughs> and for those of you worldwide, too, uh, it's been pouring cats and dogs here for a couple of days, and we don't know what to do about that because it never happens here. It's scary out there. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, for, well, who'd like to pitch this one or catch this one? Um, what are some things that you want to be sure that actors are consistently doing when they show up? I mean, besides the usual form of being there on time and signing in, what, what else can you tell us just to some of the ABCs to begin with? I mean, I would just say be really prepared when you come in and listen to, um, you know, the camera operator is basically our voice and um, just listen and, you know, when we say don't overact, just, you know, listen to what we have to say. It's, it's really basics. You know, you come in there, we give you a script and, um, and you do your job. Basically, I, I agree with that. Uh, I also think that the being prepared is having studied, and so you're we're expecting you. You know, sometimes we'll pick on a look, but a lot of times we'll pick on a look and your resume, which is online these days. Everything's online, so <clears throat> when you come, you try not. Hopefully, we expect you to not sabotage yourself. Take all your baggage outside, come in, be upbeat, uh, don't whine about anything. Get into the audition. <clears throat> read the script, work on the script, and sometimes people are chit-chatting. We want that too, because that makes you relax, have a good time, and if you have a question, that's fine to ask a question, but get in, do your job, and get <coughs> out. Exactly. You can't expect, you know, we all want it to be personable, but we have to, we have a lot of stuff to do. We have a lot of people to get in and out, especially in commercials. It's very different from theatrical. Yeah, we try to make it as a relaxed atmosphere as we possibly can for you guys. So yeah. one of the things that, that I've actually we've talked about before mm -hmm. is what you, how what you're doing to make the actor be able to function well. That what you guys are talking about me having a relaxed atmosphere. Mm -hmm. What is it that you're aware of that you do in, in your session to make it go well for the person to be able to put a decent audition on tape? Well, what I like to do is if we have time is is I try to rehearse people. And I think if we get one rehearsal in there, everybody knows where they're supposed to stand, where they're supposed to go, and how it ends. So I like to do that. That's kind of my thing. Sometimes when we get really, really slammed, like about 3 o'clock in the afternoon because people haven't come early and <laughs> all those reasons, and the 5.30 people don't want to be in traffic, so they want to come <laughs> at 3 o'clock. Um, I'll go out, you know, I have a session director, um, and but I'll go out there and I will go over the action with the people outside of the room. I'll rehearse you outside of the room before you go in with my session director because we have to move along very, very quickly. And although we want a relaxed atmosphere, we have to go really, really fast. And you have to expect that for commercials. So some people aren't going to think that's a relaxed atmosphere. So um, 
Yeah, we do. We try to rehearse you. And sometimes you're in a scene that there are seven, eight people in that scene. And I remember one time we were doing something for Visa, and it was a operating room. Someone was giving birth, and but the director was like, he he loved theatrical stuff. So it was basically Jeff just run with it. I need seven people in there, and everybody has to be doing something. So you know you have dialogue, but then you have to start to create other dialogue because we are not allowed to allow you to improvise per se. So what we do is we throw lines at you and you're more than welcome to grab those lines or if your creative mind wants to go somewhere else. But if I have seven people at a time, sometimes I had two teams come in at 10 o'clock and I don't have the next team coming till 10.30. So I have two teams, that's 14 people in a room that I'm going through the blocking and I'm saying, now pay attention because this is nurse one, this is nurse two, this is the doctor. Uh, you know, so I'm giving everyone roles and I'm saying what's going on. And then we'll walk through it like once or twice, like everybody said here already. And you just really have to be concentrated when you're in that room. And of course, you're there to get a job, I mean, Sorry, basically. <laughs> and sometimes we'll, all of us, will take from the director's treatment, like maybe a little cut and paste of something of the way they've described the character. And sometimes you won't get anything. So you have to make it your own when you get there because say 50 people are going up for a part and how do you know what's going on so hopefully you get a rehearsal hopefully you can ask the session director but mostly you have to like suss it out yourself through the storyboard and what's on that and what they want you to do you have to come in with uh, you have to take chances yeah but it doesn't mean also I agree with you overacting you know what I mean if you're if it, no no <laughs> if uh, if you're in the room with like seven people and you really want to stand out, you know, oh, yeah. overacting, yeah. It, it doesn't work. And I'm standing outside. Is well, that'll yeah, make you basically. Stand out for sure, yeah. yeah. It just doesn't work. It's just going to make you look bad. I mean, commercials are, it's a scene, and I really compare it to one line if you're auditioning for a movie or a TV show, if it's one line or under five. Like, you have to present yourself in a very strong way in a very short amount of time. And it's very much, it's the same as theatrical when you go in and audition for one of those things. Like, you know, there has to be a feeling of connection and a feeling of history. And commercials are hard because there isn't the scene that's long to really dig into and that you love and the character to build. So, um, you know, you have to be respectful of commercials. That's why it's good to take maybe even a directing class at a college or something because you come in into a scene a different with a different interpretation when you go into it saying what do I want from character A as the director now I want character A to play it this way and B to play it this way so C can react a certain way so if you start to look at a piece as with a director's mind you start to be not so pushed very relaxed subtle underplayed and you're just part of the puzzle that all goes together because that's what it is mm -hmm. it's just one big puzzle and we all have to fit in together and so it's really nice when you see a performance not try to stand out not try to be that guy oh i only had one line but can you see me going back on something that you were talking about uh in the beginning of this a little earlier i've also got some questions from the, the house here and also actors online um, and Cindy Conway was asking, I constantly hear the importance of improvisation with commercial acting. When is it a good idea to go, quote, end quote, off copy, and when is it not a good idea in the commercial world? I do a lot of improv, and I've done some, I think all of us here have done theatrical casting, so that, and we've done, come from the theater, and I really feel like they tell us not to improvise. They, the union, they, the producers, but I'm going to get a better performance if I can scooch it in there. So if you think that you're just going to do the one line, and it, it doesn't help you not to bring a personality into that one line, so that I encourage actors to, I mean, improv, improvisation doesn't mean you're going to ramble for three hours. Exactly, that's what I was going to say. Right. You can have a... A look. A, yeah. yeah. A look or... A sneeze. A walking in backwards. A tone. Mm -hmm. Or, uh, a, you know, one word. One word just to get that personality mm -hmm. out, what makes you completely different than anybody else. 
and it's it could be just a look. It's just, just so simple. And we just did a spot for that's great that you said one word because we just did a spot and the girl came in and she looked at the guy and the role is like Dave, like good morning Dave, and she looked at him and she had an attitude about Dave. What was their past history? And she just looked at him and when she walked in and she goes Dave. <laughs> She booked the spot. Yeah. They said, "Oh, isn't she funny? Isn't she?" You know, she took she took a chance. She had a background. You know. Right. That's awesome. That's great. Tell us a little bit, uh, especially for people who aren't in the city who are watching online, but those of us here too. Tell us a little bit about uh, how you actually go about choosing who's going to come in and who you're not going to bring in for for a given role. Well, we get specific. Whoa. <laughs> Hello, Los There's Angeles. A little big Jagger there. <laughs> Um, we get specific types of people that we need to call in, and um, and it, for me, it's 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 the look in the eye. I, I really look at the eyes uh, on pictures. It's very important to me. And the pictures you're looking at are hard copies, or no? They're online, all they're about all... this big, yeah. and they're like all thumbnails. <laughs> which, uh, if I might, uh, links to Kansas. something that someone asked here too, saying with those thumbnails, how much in the fast pace of your jobs? How much our, time do you our have? Our eye is so trained to do that. I agree. I mean, seriously, we just go down. We just know. It just it it's so fast. It's an energy that it, just it comes is, through yeah. the eye, and yeah. you just feel it. You you connect with the picture. It's weird. It's for me. You just connect with the eyes, and you connect with the picture, and you're like, mm, good. You had something on that too, Terry. Yeah, I've had a breakdown. Like uh, a girl <laughs> who looks um, early to mid thirties, and she looks like she's successful in her career, but she um, would not take a cab. She would ride a bike. She would walk it. She lives in a brownstone rather than a high rise. Oh and so you just, you have a certain sensitivity and you look at the picture and like Danielle says, you know, our, our eyes are trained and, and then it becomes personalized, you know, who I think like has that artistic sensibility just from the look in their eye and what their face looks like and then when there's acting involved. So first it's a look for me, and then I'll look at your resume, and I love when you have your, um, so your reel up, if you have a theatrical reel, I would really suggest to put it, in LA we use LA casting, and then there's breakdown service, and when I need reels, I'll tend to have to cross-reference to breakdown service to see your reels, because you don't have it up on LA casting, in New York, it's different. You know, it's still done by lists and agents, communication that way, not really pictures. So, and the rest of the world, you know. And that's a good thing that Terry brings up, though. I mean, the uh, biggest yeah. thing is to keep your agents, managers, whoever is submitting you out there informed about your life, about your theatrical life. You know, obviously, they're going to know about your commercial life because they're going to be booking you on stuff. But... If you just did a guest star on this, or you did a co-star, or guess what? This movie just came out, and you, you're the waitress that spills the juice on so-and-so, and you have this three-second scene that has been getting laughs in the theater or something like that. It's really important that your agent knows that, because that's a selling tool for that agent. I agree with that. I just did, um, I'm working on the Wanda Sykes show, and so I do these like little cute, funny characters, and I never know what it's going to be, and it's really spontaneous and really fast. And the first week I, I worked on it, this has to do with your reels being online, so I'm feeling like, well, I know my talent, you know, I could just, you know, tell them who, who to who to hire. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I was feeling at the moment, and the, <laughs> which is wrong. <laughs> Didn't work out. So they said to me, um, can you suggest, uh, you know, th three characters per role? There were like seven roles for the first day. So I, I you know, was scrambling around, but they have, we don't have time to cast them. Can you make sure they have their reels online? So I start to look at the people that I'm thinking about in my head, and I'm, okay, I know this person I can trust. It's the first day. I can't look around too far. 90% of those people did not have their reels online. Is that I mean, heavyweight theatrical? actors, wow. actors who do tons of television did not have their reels online. So personally, and, it's, and sometimes for commercials, it does come up. I look at reels online all the time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I can't. Things are going too fast. So I have to, you know, like everyone else here, I have to look at just that little picture. And I wanted to say, sometimes we blow up the picture. We click on it. 
make it bigger. If there's a question or we want to see a different look, maybe they're, you know, it's a ballet dancer or they have to look like a ballet dancer. And the first picture looked okay, but something else. Maybe let's see what else they have. I, I, yeah, I am so adamant about don't put up 12 pictures of yourself up. It's so bad. Put two or three at the most because on the fourth one we're going to go, nah. <laughs> Seriously, it's really important, you guys. We don't want to see 12 pictures. You don't need to. Unless that fourth is the ballet shot. I'll then put that in the second. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the agent will, if they know it's a ballet thing, they'll click on that one as the first, yeah, right. uh, as your first one exactly. in. Exactly. Vicki Marks is asking, can I get in touch with you digitally? And do you bring talent in um, without, uh, uh, without an agent for, from, from breakdowns or whatever? We do direct cast. We, uh, sometimes when we do non-union jobs, sorry, SAG. What? Um, do, do what? What? Sometimes, I said, sometimes. Actors access. Actors access, yeah. We, we, we or if there's a special skill. Yeah, special skills for sure. Ethnicity that. And we just did a spot where it was a ballet dancer, and so we put it out there because some agents didn't know if someone was a ballet dancer or something like that, or there were people that didn't have agents. So they submitted. You know, you have to be careful. I mean, look, you are a product. The biggest thing is you have to be very wise to what your product is also because you don't want to be submitting something that you are so totally wrong for just because, oh, well, maybe Jeff, maybe Danielle, maybe Franny, maybe Terry will see my face and then they'll think of me for something in the future. Yes, they will, not to bring you in because you wasted the time on the exactly. other job. And I know that's hard to say sometimes to an actor because, look, I was an actor for 15 years as well. I know what it is to get that job and to pay the rent and everything else. But you have to back off a little bit. And when we do put it out there for an actor to submit themselves, please really read that definition of what we're looking for. That's really important. Do you have any experiences um, of uh, where, where you, that you can cite that uh, people didn't do that? They yeah, they understand. came in on the ballet spot two we a week ago, and they Literally. couldn't do anything. Yeah. Or looking, for, yeah, or looking for uh, a real police person yeah. or a real fireman or you, when you really need something. Right. In it puts us in a horrible position when we rent out a pool and uh. we have to see divers and they're all, uh, I have to dive off that 10 meter board and I'm like, yeah, you do. Yeah. That's why you're here. Well, I thought you'd change it and I could just jump off. No. Um, no. I was going to happen to all of us. Uh, you should think of us as a team because uh, we need really good actors. We're nothing without good actors. So we're doing our job and you're doing your, your job by being really good and just yeah. trust that, you know, we need good actors and just be the best that you can. That you can, and, and you guys make us look really good right. when you when you perform. You know, mm -hmm. to send in that tape and being proud of what you have on that tape to the directors. It, it comes back to us, it comes back to you. So we want every single one of you that comes yeah. in the session to book the job. Yeah, Unfortunately, on only one of you can, but we wouldn't bring you in. I, I remember I was doing a job uh, years ago and I had met this Asian gentleman at I think a seminar or something like this with SAG or something, <laughs> and I hadn't brought him in at all and it had been at least five years and he looked at me when he finally came in the room and he smiled and he said, do you remember me? And I said, yeah, I remember you from the, oh, oh wow, you do? I said, I'm sorry, I just haven't had anything that you're really right for. Now you're right for this. He got a call back, he didn't book it, but at least he had a call back. You know, so and believe me, if you keep getting in on the job, like someone else says, hey, Jeff, I feel so bad. I've been in for you for like 10 times. I haven't booked yet. I said, did I stop bringing you in? <laughs> when I stop bringing you in, then you need to worry. I believe in you. You should believe in yourself. Your agent believes in you. Your manager believes in you. Other casting people who we call and we say, hey, Danielle, I'm having a really tough time on this job. Have you done any yada, yada, yada? Oh, sure. C call this guy. Call that guy. So we you'd be surprised we talk. Yeah, yeah, we do. We're all here as a team. And that was a perfect area. That's so cool. That is. That's know. a great word, <laughs> team. That's yeah. great. That's great. Um, it is a very interesting question comes in uh, over the web here uh, where the actor says, if you're in a room with an inexperienced actor who takes over the room poorly, can you ask to audition with someone else? 
Can we ask to audition? Can, can the actor ask you? Meaning the second actor. Yeah. Can the second actor. Yeah, the, the actor's just done an audition, and, and the other and actor We'll say it together. It. We'll do that for you. Yes. Yeah. That's what I we're there for. I would say yes, but yeah. don't do it in front of the other yeah. actor. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say, I've actually, we have spy cam, all of us, in our offices. If we're not in the room, what? usually we're watching. What? <laughs> How will we know to bring you in? Anyway, so there have been times that I've gone, Oh my God, that guy's so good, and that one's not. It's struggling and something. So I'll make the other actor wait. I mean, we try not to be unkind, and or you know, we see someone else that would be. Except better that one that time scene. you said to that guy, "Get out." <laughs> Get the freak out. That's a bad word. No, but we do. We want we want you to look good too. You know, and um, and if they start o taking over the room, you know, it's it's embarrassing for for everybody, and we can't put that on tape. We we just can't show a tape like that. Great. Here's another uh, question offline here uh, that pertains to some of the things that we were talking about before. On occasion, a camera operator, the person running the audition on the first call, will direct the spot away from what I, as an actor, may want to show. Is it, is it the worst thing to say, can I just do it this way? And do you think, uh, and do what I think the spot calls for? Um, Basically, how bad is it to disagree with the camera operator? You go first, uh, I'd like to jump in there. <laughs> Um, we we get we have conversations we see treatments of um, the spot we have conversations with the director and the producer and then it's our job to go into the camera it's a session director actually he should be more than a camera operator uh, or she and then um, like I'm in there and I think all of us are in there for the first three or four or five groups and we are directing it and showing our session director what to do. And also, during those first couple of groups, we see where it's going and if we're explaining it right. And then we leave the session directors. And so, no, it is not up to you. You know, this is prepared. It's not, the session director just doesn't make their own choices. So it is not up to the actor to change it. Just a side note to that. I think the way we were asked the question is kind of a little misleading because you are a talent. So as the talent, yes, we, we depend on you to think creatively your interpretation of the spot. If you are so far, and this I can only speak for my, myself and my office, if you really feel that you want to try something that way, we always put you down twice, at least, in my office anyway. Why not bring that up, let us see it, if it is so far off the mark, believe me, we'll tell you. But you might bring something to the party, so to speak, that we didn't think about, and it does work. The director might see something in it, and he might gravitate to something in it. He also might steal something from it and not hire you because you want the right look, you want the right size, you want the right weight, or something like that. But that's just in my office. Right, and if it doesn't work, we'll definitely tell you. You know, you can't just kind of come up with it we, when we rehearse it, we'll see if it works. If it works, it's great. If it doesn't, can't do it. Great, great. Um, here's another one from the room. Uh, when you're auditioning people all day, and it's a long day, and you've seen a lot of actors, is there a tendency to choose someone who auditioned later in the day because they're freshest on your mind? No. And why is that? Because it, you mean, it, uh, you mean my, our clients, when they watch it, uh, the, you think they're picking... I the think there's, the why I like this That's question is because question. I think there is some misunderstanding about the process. I think you can help us straighten out. I've had people get callbacks from the beginning of the day and from the end of the day and from the middle of the day. If you are not nuts when you walk in the room and centered and do the best <laughs> you can, you can be, and you can be the opposite type from what they are looking for because all of us on this panel pick people against type. I'm sure of it. Like I, I, a nacho man, a few years ago, I, they asked me for Woody Allen types. And so, you know, skinny guys, they didn't want to go overweight. It was eating, it was a food product. And um, this, um, I just threw in a couple of different types. And the last person on the tape was this fellow, Mark, whose name I can't remember. He did Nacho Man. And he was funny as heck, and he booked it. And so he was the last person on the take. They were tired. And I added him to callbacks. And, you know, they didn't want to see anybody else. And he booked it. So I don't think there's a rule. 
Do you guys? No. 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 Right? I've had the very first person who came in book and the last person and people in the middle. And don't freak yourself out by being in the waiting room and saying, geez, these people are all really skinny and I'm chubby or I'm African American and they're Caucasian. I'm a female and they're all males. Because that's the creative process. I've been very blessed to be able to do stuff like that. Change a role from Caucasian to African American, a woman to a man and vice versa. So don't second guess yourself. And also when you are in the room, uh, if we ask you to do it again, don't start to apologize for what you did the first time. You weren't wrong the first time. We just want to show our client A and Z. We don't want to show them A and A+. plus. We want to show them the spectrum that you have. Go One ahead. last thing. One thing the actors do, and I was an act actress me many years of my life, is we sabotage ourselves. Guys, girls, all of us in this room. Every you can't tell me that not one person in this room has not sabotaged themselves at an audition. Basically, you see whether it's a commercial or a theatrical, but commercial, like you, you see the storyboard. I did this for so many years because it was one girl who was my nemesis, and I remember thinking, "Oh my God, there she is again!" And oh my God, she looks just like the storyboard. Well, now I know that they hire, they subcontract just some artist to do the storyboards. Yeah. Not, and most of the time, it's not even the ad agency. And there it is up on the board. And you're like, oh, God, oh, they, they, they sound really good. They're looking really good. I gained a couple of pounds over the holidays. I mean, swear to God, you have got to get rid of all that stuff. Because you're going to find a way to sabotage yourself. You've got to stay strong when you come in. It doesn't mean bossy. But you've got to be open and loose and take a few chances. And just go, without yeah. being arrogant. Yeah, and yeah. Just, just go and do your work. Do what you're supposed to do. Uh, you're do, do, what, do what you love. And then leave. Good. Good. <laughs> And uh, no, I don't mean like leave, but I mean like. <laughs> I notice and how leave, leave comes leave, in a leave lot. It, in leave, leave it behind. Don't don't freak out about the audition. Go on to the next one because that's when you sabotage yourself as well. On this topic, you guys, what are some things that uh, that you might list as things not to do? Like it's very easy to you know we we kind of know what a commercial is like, but there might be some things that don't you've seen. Don't be happen. rude to the assistants outside, yeah. and don't take any rudeness from the assistants outside. It's a double road there, okay. And if someone is rude to you outside, it is your job though to blow it off and to come in that room and book the job or at least the callback. All right. And if you are late because you went to 20th Century Fox and you got a flat tire going to a pilot and the pilot was more important than this stupid commercial, well, the stupid commercial in reality is going to make you probably more money than the pilot guest star role that you went on. All we're saying is be focused when you come in there and just be kind to each other as well as the people running the session. I, I had a callback session the other day and... Um there was an actor there that I knew, and he had a callback, and he wanted to, to, to let the clients know that he knew me, which yeah. is not a big deal. It's like, hi. Mm -hmm. But he <laughs> walked over and tripped on two tables and with his hand out to shake my hand, and everybody was like, what the hell is going on? Just wave. It's all cool. I'll see you later. You know what I mean? Just do your job, do your callback, and then just leave. Sarah, did you, did you want to um, at, well, speaking of stupid commercials, I've had, um, I like everyone to bring a picture and a resume attached to their picture, especially on callbacks. And um, I'm usually, I usually bring you in the room at callbacks, and what I do is I quickly look at your resume, and um, I've had people who give me their res their pic well they don't have pictures with them or they have a picture without a resume and I'll say where's your resume oh for a commercial and I just think it's disrespectful for your to yourself and to us and these um, producers in there and directors they're very creative people and they like to amuse themselves besides being curious about who, who's coming in for them other than a face, even if there isn't heavy duty acting in there. And they'll, they'll turn it over, you know, when there's a break and they'll look and they like, they're curious, like who's coming in because, um, you know, especially LA or New York, you can have very, you know, in LA, you can be on all the guest stars on TV shows and it's, it's 
they're interested in that. So I love a pet peeve I have is when you don't bring a resume. I agree. And Picture I and resume to, to everything. <laughs> Even if you say, oh, what, everything's online now, I still, I'm with Terry. I like it because a lot of my producers and directors are working on much smaller budgets now. So if we do not send them a link at nighttime, they do get a disc the next day. I like to have that packet all ready for them so they can flip over those pictures. And you'd be surprised if you're in the room. It breaks the ice also, like Terry said. Um, they look at the resume and the, wait, Married with children, which one were you in? Because I used to watch all of those. Oh, well, I recorded in five episodes. Who was I? I was the next door. Oh, my God, you were so funny, blah, 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 blah. So it breaks the ice. It gives you something else to talk about. I have a pet peeve. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, all of us see a lot of talent. And uh, I try to be creative uh, on, e on every job to bring in different faces. Sometimes I bring in some of the same faces because they're good. So, I, you know, I have to get better at this too. A, a lot of actors come in and they go, oh my God, I haven't seen you in years. So I go through a series of changes when I get that kind of a comment. Well, like, oh my God, I didn't call this person in forever and they hate me. <laughs> or, oh, or uh, you know, I, I, I just didn't have their character, or why didn't I call them? I go through all these changes. Instead of saying, hey, it's really nice to be here, nice to see you, Happy New Year, or something like that. You know what I mean? Instead of being proactive, it's, it, I, I have to say, every single day, some actor says that to me, and it's, it's a little off-putting, like, but it's mostly like, oh, God, when, you know, I haven't seen this place. Boy, did you change it? I haven't been here in so long. You're like, I have enough guilt in my life. Can you just, like, chill the guilt? Go ahead. Oh, mine is don't lie on your resume. Um, because that happened to me when I was casting a film. Someone came in, and I was reading their resume, and they put in a film that I cast. And I said... What were you in this film? They're like, oh, I was a, a num and they like said a role, and I was like, I, I cast this film. I, I don't remember you, and they got really. It was a, just a horrible moment. I felt so bad for them, but you know, you just don't, you just don't lie on your resume. Or be good at improv to get out of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't try to fool us. Oh, I was uh, put in on the set. Yeah. I was. You weren't there. Good answer. <laughs> Awkward. Um, here's an interesting question. In this world of ethnically vague, in quotes, is there room for redheads or should I be making a hair appointment? Fran ah! Francine? <laughs> I have, this is really funny. I didn't know it, but at one point, not recently, but I was picking a lot of redheads or something. I don't know. And my, one of my directors said, I don't want to see any more redheads. And then I have other directors who are like, I can't, they can't get enough of redheads. It's a really sweet question. It really doesn't have anything to do with anything. As far as wh who we pick, you know, maybe there'll be, maybe there's a specific thing that comes out that says we want a redheaded family. Could be. But in, you know, you might as well say, um, you know, uh, do we want, uh, you know, wasps, or do we want Jews in this spot, or do we want blacks in this spot, or do we do, it's like, everybody's everything. If they say ethnically diverse, oh, here's a good one. If they say, hey, I want an ethnically diverse family, <laughs> what? So wait, are you talking about you want ha someone who's mixed ethnicity, dad, a mixed ethnicity kid, a mixed ethnicity, you know, it's like, okay, so what are they mixed? How do you match them? They don't even know. So you have to be creative. That gets really crazy um, because our days are so short now and the budgets, as we keep saying, keep getting mm -hmm. cut. And when they give you a spot and they say, open it up to all ethnicities. Yeah. And like, you only have two can days have one to do day. this. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. We or have you have to one day and there's five people in the family. Yeah, we have to mathematically figure yeah. it out. And so Seriously. you say, okay, <laughs> from 9.30 in the morning to 11, I'm having my Caucasian mm. family. My Indian family, East Indian family, <laughs> is from 11.45 to, you know, so when you are not on time, haha, -ha, going back to the very first thing, um, it throws everything off, except if you have a wonderful director who says, give me a wide, ethnically diverse um, I have a family. little thing about redheads. Uh, 
<laughs> no, I, I would say don't change your hair color if you're redhead because I was, for instance, I was just putting together a huge cast and one day, really fast, it was going to run on the, um, the, the awards, that were, the Golden Globes, and it was very theatrical looking, like people were making films and the very wide range and, you know, people all across the board. And when I was putting my session together, I do, I look to see how diverse everything is and I look, okay, like I don't want it all brunettes, certainly not all blondes, yeah. and I will always look for redhead and put some redheads in there too. <laughs> and there aren't many around, so I would there say aren't. if you're a redhead, and you look good with that red hair, I wouldn't change it. Keep that bottle, it's important. <laughs> How about red beards? <laughs> no. no. Will you shave? That's, that's one. Will you shave? Yeah. Well, speaking of will you shave, uh, someone asked here, uh, have you ever asked an actor to cut their hair at an audition? At an audition? That's what it says on the card. For the job. For the job, not For at the job. job. Yeah. Mm. Not at the audition. No. We do ask at the audition, are you willing to shave? Are you willing to cut your hair? But by no means do we say for the callback. Well, I shouldn't say that because we do no, have, have that once. I have, yeah. yeah. That. At the callback, we'd like to see them cleaned, cleaned up quite a bit. Well, then it comes down to me calling you and you saying, Jeff, you know, to be honest with you, I'm on <laughs> two callbacks for feature films and I'm like this and I cannot, but I'll be willing to shave or cut my hair if I book the job. And when you can you look online yourself. and look at his other pictures where he's clean shaven, right? Yeah. Usually, yeah. if you have facial hair or a different color hair, then for you can instance. say, you can look, look me up. Now, for women with facial hair, <laughs> you better shave. Ex except it's very unique, like redheads. So don't yeah, there might be that, that one spot. Yeah. yeah. We need that bearded lady. Yeah. Oh, we did circus, have one circus. actor uh, have to sh uh, be willing to shave his eyebrow, which uh, did grow back, I thank God. <coughs> I, was, well, I was worried about yeah, that. Yeah, because sometimes it doesn't. it doesn't. What about that great spot for Jack in the Box? Yeah. Oh, my the God. Bowl, the the bowl. bowl heads. Did yeah. anyone yeah. do it? Oh, yeah. Alison Horn did that. Oh, really? Yeah. So what was the deal? Everyone had to cut their yeah, hair? They were wigs. Yeah. Really? I don't think so. They're, they're not? No. Uh-uh. Seriously? I had a spot where people had to shave their heads at the day of the shoot. That's yeah, we so did. Hot. Hot. <laughs> and people Wait, did it. I mean, we paid them money. They're we seriously, paid them they like weren't $10, wigs? $10, no. Because I know Wendy Haynes was in that, and she, her hair is long again. Right, but she had to grow No. Fascinating, isn't it? See, wow. the casting agents are learning Love something. It. We don't Love know. It. <laughs> great spot. That really was a great, great spot. spot, yeah. Good, good, good. Um, oh. Someone says here from Chicago, do you guys ever rely on Chicago agents, and if so, who? And P.S., she would love to have a copy of uh, your book, Terry. So, oh. Joan Hamill wants your book. Oh. Um. Pay up. Do you up. ever deal with Chicago <laughs> agents from here? Uh, to be honest with you, no. I just got, I, uh, this lady keeps emailing me from Italy. Uh, have you guys oh, been I getting it? Oh, I, I got oh, that too. Oh, my God, Lucy yeah. or whatever yeah. her name yeah. is. And she, it's she Lucia. Would, Whatever, she won't, you know, she just won't, she won't die, leave it alone, you know, it's like, and she calls, and she calls like yeah. four times today alone. Yeah. Finally, I just said, it's Justin, Jeff's in the session, he just said, he loves your pictures, but you live in Italy, and even if you came here, you would have to have a green card, or a work permit, or what, well, how do I go about doing that, uh, I mean, it's oh, like. No. People want you to, uh, to know if it's okay that they put themselves on tape someplace else and honestly it just doesn't work for commercials, commercials. no <coughs> probably never because yeah. we usually farm it out to a new york affiliate yeah, or the right. ad agency does sometimes we fly to new york yeah or, we need to see you there you know. bottom so, line bottom line is that who decides who gets a call back this is a uh, we were touching on this earlier i think some people are not really actually familiar with the process so in answering this perhaps uh, you guys could walk people a little bit through how the process works so that we know on our end what's going on. Uh, we get boards, we cast it, we send the DVDs or the link to the clients and the director. They give us callback lists, we put them together, and we call you guys in. Meaning the director picks his, the clients production company, yeah. or I'm sorry, the advertising, advertising agency. Advertising. Right. And, and sometimes there's eight people watching from yeah. the advertising there's, agency. Yeah, yeah. To multiple get booked, spots. Yeah. To get booked, there are eight people who have to decide on 
ultimately the most is eight people and not including not including us the writer the creative the the writer the producer. art director the producer a creative director a creative supervisor the director on the other side and then a can an account executive could be involved cuz ultimately they're all looking to see getting ready for the pre-production meeting they want to be very creative, and who will the client buy? And then finally, at this pre-production meeting, <coughs> the client. So and it's I'm a process. When you guys get a call back, it's amazing. It's and I'm really sure amazing. we've all had the same experience where sometimes we're working with a director for years and years and years, and they might be on numerous projects at the same time. You'll get a call maybe a day before and say, Jeff, who did you really love? I don't have any time to watch any of the tapes because they come to trust your opinion. That's why they keep hiring you. So then yeah. you get the, the job of picking people. But then you're like a parent because everybody we, we bring love, in, yeah. we love. Yeah. So it's like, oh my God, how do I sacrifice my son for my daughter? Exactly. You know? It's like, it's like Sophie's Except choice. My son is my daughter. So. Jeff's choice. I'll tell you. Uh, it says here, is it really true that to get the callback is as good as landing the spot? I've gotten many callbacks, but few bookings, and my friends often say this. So what you're saying is, in fact, it is. It's amazing to get a callback. Yeah. It's amazing. Because the director will remember you. If you don't get the spot this time, you know, he'll remember you next time. Directors actually have uh, favorite lists. I don't know if you guys... Your sure. Yeah, do. some of my directors mm -hmm. And um, they always give me the list in the beginning of a job. And if they, they say if they fit, bring them in. Somebody and did. some directors hop over to theatrical <coughs> projects. And I remember Debbie Kurtz, one time I was talking to her, another casting director friend, and um, she got a call from her director, I believe it was Jesse Dillon, who was doing a film at Universal, and he said, Deb, who are those guys I really love and I bring in all the time? I have a couple of FBI guys in here and I really want to use them. And so James Reese and one other That's guy right. I can't remember right now yeah. books the spot in the feature. Well, the Farrelly brothers picked Roy Jenkins, who's a groundling and who was in those Holiday Inn spots, right. and they saw him in those <coughs> Holiday Inn spots, and he worked. He's working with the Farrelly brothers for on a few projects. You'd be surprised if you you know you could even call your agents or your theatrical agents say, Hey, uh, I heard at this seminar that you guys get breakdowns every single day, and in them it always says. I need to know who the girl is in the Visa commercial that's on blah, 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 blah. Every day, I guarantee you there's three to four of those breakdowns out. Because I get a lot of calls saying, hey, do you know who cast that spot? And sometimes, because we have a, a community here, we all belong to the uh, Commercial Casting Directors Association. So we all get together at least two, if not three times a year. So we banter and we share information like that. I think you, there's a Google. You can, I mean, I think there's a way. There's some um, organization that will help you find who cast what. Yeah. Oh, really? And I don't oh, know really? the name uh, of it. Yeah. Well, also, I, is it IMDb? It's not IMDb. IMDb. Um, IMDb. Yeah, maybe. I don't think well, that's more on films. Well, commercials, ad -critic. it's really ad -critic. tough. Ad, -critic. ad -critic. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Can I, can I mention avails or first refusals do. in oh. New York? <laughs> um, we just explained all the people, and this is a process that happens within two days, usually. So when we put you on our veil, our first refusal, and you say, yes, you're available for the day of the shoot, it's very, very important because it goes through that whole process, and then there's a pre-production meeting where everyone's there from all over the country, and then they buy you. They say, okay, we call your agent or you directly if you're direct, and we say, okay, we want to book you, and you say, oh, well, wait, I'm not available. What happens then? So appreciate avails or New York first refusals or whatever it's called around the world. And you could talk to your agent because your agent knows the casting people in town, okay? They know if so-and-so puts two people on a veil, it's only two people. You also might have a callback where they've put everybody on the callback on a veil, okay? I don't do that. We really hate that. We, Everyone on this we panel. We do that. No, we do that. You do? Yes. Oh. Because oh. that night, here's what God, we do. That's awful. Because oh. that night, you leave, we're there editing their selects. <coughs> that night, it goes to all those layers, and the next morning, then we'll call your agents and we'll say, we will, here's who we're putting on a strong avail who's being presented, and then I know that you're uh, available. I because I've lost people. 
I have too recently because I hear that a lot of people are doing these blanket avails, which you probably hate and we hate too. But there's, I've been putting out, and I'll give you the verbiage. It's a way for us to keep of, control of it. I really yeah, don't but I hate still it. don't think actors. It's not right. Because then you stop taking it, it seriously, let, don't for you? For the agents I to let us you know one. if right, anybody's going on another uh, callback or, or if they're on avail for something else. Or if you decide, you know what, it is your option to take the job. I mean, I know that sounds really awful coming from the casting side because we want you to take the job. But if it's between our commercial and the guest star in the MASH reunion show, I can tell you you're going to take the MASH reunion show because you're going to be seen by all those hundreds of thousands of people out there. And that also leaves us with, you know, we're stuck there. And that's why we have backups. Correct. <laughs> They we have, never usually like the backup, though. They love. But that's no, why you give person. them the third backup. They always yeah, pick the yeah. third backup. <laughs> <laughs> and is there? What is? What does it mean uh, uh, for your when you hear your first choice? What does that actually mean? Sometimes they pick the backup, though. Yeah, I don't ever. I don't ever tell anyone what well, yeah. position they're in. I never tell the position because they yeah. change it. Many never times. know. And some of our clients, I'm sure you guys go through this also, they say, we're not putting so-and-so in as the favorite because this guy really likes to screw with us back at the agency. So we're putting him in as the backup. He's going to pick him, and we'll be happy with our first choice. And then right? it backfires. And then it backfires. <laughs> but, right? Does yeah. that not happen all and the time? I, yeah. yeah, I usually tell the agents that it's between two people. <coughs> That's yeah. how I try to gentle it up a lot of times when i say first choice they pick the backup yeah and the backup was great i mean it just was a different way to go <laughs> sometimes it's an ethnicity sometimes they want to go with a, a african-american family and the caucasian family is the backup so you just say it's between this per you know a couple people that's great um going into some of uh, some other questions from our, our uh, video audience our, our web audience uh Claudio Avarez says, I'm fluent in Spanish and English, although I have a light accent, not heavy, but it's there. Uh, should I consider, uh, should consider seeing an agent for that specializing in Spanish speaking parts or not? Just trying to figure out if speaking Spanish will limit my job opportunity. So she's asking, you know, really, how does she pitch herself? Well, I mean, your world. we do a lot of uh, Spanish commercials as well. And sometimes they just they want Spanish looking people, but they don't want to hear the accents. So. Or if they want to hear the accents, there's like several different types of accents right. in the community if they want you to speak, you know, Spanish. Right. So there's so many different dialects that you really have to be proficient in that dialect when we do put it out to direct cast or something like that. If we say we really want to hear this sound, don't submit yourself if you like really Puerto don't Rican have or that. Something right. Like that, rather than standard Spanish. Related but to embrace that. You know, embrace that. She does have that. Neutral. I take it it's Neutral, a, a female, right, exactly. correct? This is, yes. Yeah, but embrace what she has because, uh, to be honest with you, there's so many MOS spots out there that we'd be bringing them in for that they don't ever speak on camera it's that they're they're yeah. fine for. It's just a look. Yeah. And um, who's the beautiful uh, lady on um, Modern Family, Sophia whatever, who has been doing this for years and years and years and she gets show after show and she is who she is and she you just embrace it related to this question uh gabriela sosa says i grew up in panama and i speak fluent spanish and i always get sent out for latina roles but i look like a stereotypical swede so my look isn't what american audiences equate with latina she's probably not going to get booked as a latina then yeah i mean it's a look but she could be your wife yeah. In something. We'll have yeah, to. that's a tough one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I do get submit. I do some Spanish commercials too, and uh, I have to say, when I have a Latina who submitted to me who has blonde hair, and uh, she definitely looks Hispanic, I I don't know what to do because my guys are not going to yeah, buy it. Yeah, it's a quick look. It's a commercial. It's thirty seconds. Yeah. yeah. That's a tough one. Going back to process, um, interesting question from the room here. Uh, should an actor be concerned when it was time for them to audition if the casting director leaves the room to make a call and she leaves the assistant, is the way it says here, uh, during the audition when it's being placed on tape? Again, not probably understanding the process. All of us have camera session directors. So you can't take offense at anything in the process, no matter what. You come in 
And if she or he feels comfortable leaving their associate or assistant in the room while the audition is going on, it, it, they had to do something. I mean, it's hopefully not rude. And you have to trust that their person, their assistant, is strong. And, and we'll, we'll see take the care tape. of you. We'll yeah. see the tape and, you know, it's all good. I was also asked here... Um, if, they, if uh, one needs to be concerned about when they're being brought in. And I'm not exactly sure what they're meaning. By I think we answered. Yeah. 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 Okay, good. That. Good, 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 good. Glad we got that out of our way. Um, <laughs> Morning, middle. <laughs> good. Uh, there's so many great questions on the floor here. Given the uh, quicker pace of casting and with electronics via electronic submissions, how often would you expect actors to update their online images? And in addition to that, my agent wants me to have more many more than three pictures. I would say look like your picture. Yes. You know, so if you haven't changed in a year, you don't have to change Cut your, your picture. Cut your hair, grow your hair, grow a beard. If you lost weight yeah. or gained <laughs> yeah. weight, um, I was casting for the host of a television thing, a very handsome African-American guy, and he came in, and he, you know, it was a Denzel Washington kind of thing, and he came in and he seriously was 30 pounds heavier than his picture and he was a great actor and we put him on tape but he was wrong for the part he was not going to get that i mean we let him audition but and it also it's hard it's hard when you have those four five six or seven pictures and your hair is different in every single yeah. one of them yeah you Who know you? i <laughs> exactly i agree with danielle I, you know i'll look one two three four by the sixth seventh and eighth the actors usually start making funny faces. <laughs> get bored. Wearing, uh, it's ridiculous. I go, oh, okay, that's it. Holding like, up this a Pepsi. Is, exactly. <laughs> and I do. I lose interest. Yeah, that's true. Good. Uh, do, uh, do people who are not very attractive, sagging jaw lines, uh, bags under their eyes, uh, you know, various looks, have much of a chance of getting commercial work? Character. Love them. Love, Love them. them. That's, that's a real a, person. That's what that's, we cast. What? Yeah. All of us in this room are uh, the the. It's a lot of character changed. stuff, comedy, character stuff. It's From great. From the '60s and '70s to being the Donna Reed look, the perfect look. Yeah. It's now about every single person in America. That's and that's what, what we makes all us cast. creative. We love it. Yeah. We really love it. Uh, love maybe Bring the, on the chins. look doesn't look. Uh, yeah. yeah. Love them. The pulled look doesn't look so good though. Although one thing with pulled. I mentioned with food right. commercials. There is uh, an element of truth to, you know, they say, uh, the client says, don't bring in anyone overweight. Okay, so what is overweight? So we'll indicate, okay, a little paunch or a little something, but a lot of times they do not want someone who is And you know, people, obese. take it from me, you cannot layer enough to try and look thin. <laughs> Okay, so if you gain the 30 pounds, embrace the 30 pounds. When you lose the 30 pounds, you'll start to take the clothes off. And get a new picture. Yes. The bikini comes on. That's right. Yeah. When you're looking through those submissions, do you ever stop? Do you ever just go, we've got enough? Or do you actually look at, at all the stuff that's sent to you? I look at everything. Everything. I'm a freak. Yeah, I look at everything. Because you know, it could be that very last. Yeah, it could be that last page. Yeah. You know, when they, we, I, in my office, we do them by hundreds. You know, we like to. Yeah, that's what I, I want to see a hundred. You know, because I don't want to do twenty-five page, twenty-five, twenty-five. I, we do a hundred, and you guys, have, and you go, all right. I only have one more page mm -hmm. of a hundred people, and you're scanning. You go, oh my god. That's, that's it. it. Yeah. That's the person. Yeah, you and you guys are still anything. in business. You're still casting. So. And we're if, all working. If yeah. we, we're working. In, yes. If we're lucky enough to have more than a day, or sometimes if it's a three or four day and then you're prepping, you have an extra day, probably all of us, I know there are many times I sit in bed with my laptop. Oh, I do too. And your pictures prepping a session. That many, is an image times. I totally. love. Totally. <laughs> I got a ham sandwich and my computer, and I'm good to go. <laughs> Looking really good. <laughs> there are a lot of questions about uh, what actors can do to be in contact with you, both for uh, people have asked on several cards, if I don't have an agent, what's the best way of getting you? Some, uh, someone asked very specifically, uh, do you accept headshots for, uh, for products that I love? I really want to be on a Coke commercial, for instance. Um, Everybody what would. Is it, what is it about... 
what what avenue does an actor have to get to know you besides to the agents? For for me, I would just have them drop off an eight by ten. I don't. I don't e emails are crazy for me because yeah. it's. Me too. We have hundreds of emails a day from directors and producers, and and then you know we click on saying I'd like to be in a Coke commercial, <laughs> and we go. Okay, um, have your agents submit Who you. And <laughs> right. Or I'm yeah. pregnant. I want you to see if there's anybody looking for pregnant <coughs> women. Yeah. You know, it, it, they come in as they come in. That's what you guys don't know is, is that s one day we have an Abisco commercial, one day we have, you know, uh, whole wheat, you know, something bread, or, you know, airlines, you know, anything, Visa. We never know from day to day what products we're going to be looking for. And Francine could be working on a Coke spot, and all the rest of us could be as well. And sometimes exactly. you'll see in town, the agents go, well, wait a second. Is that your Coke spot, or is that Franny's Coke spot? I said, no, I think that's Terry's Coke spot, because I don't have any families like that in my Coke spot. So, you know, that's why we all kind of get to know what's going on as well. And sometimes you do run a campaign, you know, we do like maybe TurboTax and we did like 25 TurboTaxes. But when I was doing TurboTax, so was Danny <laughs> Goldman last year doing TurboTax. Right. So it was like, it didn't matter that I was doing 25, he was doing 10. I, um, I like picture postcards too. It's a very quick mm -hmm. reminder and I've had people send them to me for years and if you're lucky enough, fortunate enough to have be booking and you write you know, what you booked or what TV shows. And I always take an interest and I say, that's interesting. I've had nothing for this person, but isn't it great? Like they're working and someone else is booking them. So I like picture postcards. And it lets us know if you're in a show. If sometimes we can, I'm sure all of us go to theater or comedy clubs or whatever we love. Um, and it's nice if you do know someone in it, uh, but occasionally, oh, I've heard about that show, I'll go. Uh, I, I, I do look at the postcards, um, and sometimes I'll pick somebody from them. Jan tough. Janet Chu in Los Angeles asks also, uh, at, with postcards, is training in special skills based on a headshot postcard enough information on a 5 by 7 All of my credits are indie film and films I produced and video demo on my website. Special skills? Yeah, she's just, just asking sure. if just special skills is enough to paste on the oh, postcard. No, just special skills? No, she no says, resume? Oh, training in special skills. Because she's saying training on the postcard, when yeah. you flip it over, yeah. it's so little, it'll be so tiny, the writing. Then send an 8x10. If you yeah. need to send the, all the information, send the 8x10. And, and the, we, the we postcards just, are great also yeah, when yeah. you're saying, I'm guest starring in this, or I'm yeah. I'm the lead in this show in town at the taper. or It doesn't even have to be. A, we go to Equity Waiver like crazy, like Franny said about the... Um, comedy clubs when we have to look for somebody who they're doing a campaign and they're going to be able to do five spots this one guy and you have to hit the comedy clubs all within three days you know so you'd be surprised how we keep them and sometimes juggle them around um, this, uh, this is an interesting question. This is from uh, online. I've been away from the business for quite a long time. My professional credits for commercials are from when I was much younger. Although I don't list those on my resume, should I list the casting let the casting directors know that I have worked professionally in commercials in the past? Commercials upon request. And we don't have but to I think we need to know that you've worked in the past. I mean, uh, uh, mm. yeah. I mean, in some way. Sometimes we'll get a postcard and it'll say, mm -hmm. you know, I took 10 years off to raise my family. You yeah. know, I'm back in the business now. This is what I look like now. And you might say, oh, geez, I remember her. You know, oh, of course, that's great. You know, because it's, it's almost like it's a fresh face, but yet we can say they were so good. They always came in for us. They always right. got callbacks for us. So it jogs our memory as well. And sometimes it's not so easy to get that agent to take you back. So you're kind of doing all the legwork yourself again until you get that agent. But sometimes a lot of us have been in this business for so many years. Believe me, we remember Speak you. Speak for yourself. We do. Just remember. kidding. <laughs> no, but another side to that is a lot of people who do another job uh, retire from their jobs and then they start in the acting profession. So if someone was 
active in a, at a younger age, it is nice to know that mm. I can bring in, you know, there's some dialogue and this elderly man or woman can really get their teeth into it. I'm not going to be afraid to take a chance if it's not just a look. Right. Not freeze on the set because they're spending a lot yeah, of money. That's, that's a big one. I mean, that's the biggest thing, right? Yeah. I mean, we've all done real people casting as well where we've had to go out to the bingo parlors or the <laughs> dance studios or whatever. And so you, that's why you really gravitate, you know, I, I hate reality shows, but when you do see certain people on reality shows and they just pop off the screen, it's like when we do go to, you know, those clubs and we find those people at the bingo parlors or whatever that just stand out, that are just such wonderful personalities, you know? They're and if so they show up for said bonus for us, right? Yes. <laughs> Sometimes they don't come. They don't yes. understand. Oh, oh, speaking of showing up for, for uh, to the set, um, we were doing a long time ago, non-union, Super Mario job, and there was this gentleman who was the car park at my parking lot, and he looked exactly like it, and they, the agency shows up at the callback and said, what about that guy? So uh, we brought him in, and they wanted to book him, and, and at the day before the shoot, he said, I'm going to send my brother. <laughs> because yes. he couldn't leave his job. Right. He didn't understand. I mean, it wasn't because he didn't speak English. He didn't understand yeah. what the, yeah, the, the process yeah. was and what we had done. He it's was my brother. He looks just yeah. like me. I yeah, know. I mean, it was scary. So we, you know, we try to tell them up front. You know, let's get a. That's why we'd use the union people. That's why we're happy with responsibility. There's an agent involved. Exactly. And you know what? If you have a twin, sometimes oh. it will work for you. <laughs> we had a twin get sick, but was hired as a single. Oh my God. He got sick. The brother shows up on the set. Without telling you? Without telling us. Different social security number, no. He puts the brother's name oh. down. He puts oh. the brother's social. No. We wow. never knew anything about it till he told me one day. He said, you know, that was my brother that did the spot because I got hurt the day before and my leg, I couldn't walk. Oh my God, and blah, blah, blah. I never heard. I said, you know what? If they weren't any wiser, you never told me this. I, I want nothing to do with it. What do I care? Oh my God. And they split the residuals. That's what and was they great. Should've. They split. They split the they residuals. So. That's, That's really good. fun. That's good. Speaking of real people, Jelena Rose asks Since commercials are usually looking for real people, should I downplay my look instead of coming in all done up in hair and makeup? Is she here now? I don't know. I think she's in the room. Stand up. Are you? Let's see how dolled up you get. Can't see. There she is. No, you look, you look well, like you a real person. It? Yes, very beautiful, yeah. very real. You're very pretty. Yeah. I, I wouldn't downplay anything. I think That's we who overthink you are. Think things. Yeah. Yes. Just be who you are yeah. and, you know, get the specs from your agent or if it's a direct cast, you know, read what they're asking for and you have to, you have to commit to what you've assigned yourself to wear that day as that's great. I've chosen it. I'm going to stay in that moment and then, you know. Uh, okay, as an aside, um, many years ago I booked a commercial, and I have, as you know, I have curly hair. Okay, this is it. This is what you get. And so I was trying to be, you know, conservative. And so I straightened my hair, and I ended up uh, booking the job. So the morning of the, the shoot, I fixed my hair straight, which took me two hours to do. And um, get to the set, and there, there's a whole bunch of talk going on on the corner, and they're pointing at me, and I'm trying to figure <laughs> out what is going on. You know, is they pick the wrong person or what? And then I, the, someone comes over to me and says, "You know, they they want to, they're they're worried about your hair." And I said, "What? What do, do you want to cut my hair? What?" So they said, "Yeah, I'll do anything." Uh, they said, um, "Can we get your hair curly a little bit?" I had worked on it for two hours that morning. I said, give me a spritzer bottle. So they spritzed my hair. My hair was so big. And it, they, want, they made me futuristic. And it was un And so you don't know. You don't know what ha is going to happen. There I worked on it for hours. So that's like, whatever. You're lucky you have Jew hair. Yeah, I was going to say it, but I held on to that. But just keep in mind, especially for the ladies, when they tell you hair and makeup camera ready because it's maybe a little more upscale or it is, please make sure that camera ready makeup doesn't make you look like a prostitute. Yeah. Okay? It, it really means... Sophisticated. Uh, just yeah, sophisticated. It just means your natural attire, yeah. just hence a little. Unless they've asked for you yeah. to look like a prostitute. Glitter lipstick is kind of out. So yeah. I went, yeah. 
Is it okay to submit oneself for ethnicities for which you can pass or have been previously cast as? That's a pet peeve of mine. I think if they've asked for a Hispanic person, they want a Hispanic person because they have, um, what is it, uh, their client, they sell it to that market. Telemundo. Yeah, I mean, they, they want that. The client wants that. And, you know, I don't, you know, I understand that, you know, if you're Italian or Greek, you can pass for, Ita uh, for Spanish. I really try to, to make it, to okay. give them what they want. Yeah, we try, but I believe it's union rules. It's what you look like. Yeah, it's right, not, right, right. It's, as an actor, it's what you look like. Or, like, age, it's... Yeah. what you can play so and I kind of go the opposite of what Franny said because I um, I do give first preference to that community whatever we're casting right. but then if you do look the certain way yeah. then open the doors to all the Greeks and Italians as well That's come true. on so. down yeah I do yeah. That too. yeah good 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 uh, how does your relationship with the particular agency factor into your decisions are there, are there, how does your relationship with a particular like you agency are. factor into your decision? Like who you're bringing uh, in? Like if we're friends with an agent? Yeah, like do you have certain in? agencies that you look to first to bring oh. in talent no, to No, I, I, look, I look at every single picture every, from small to, to big agents. And they complain about that. They're yeah. like, why aren't you bringing in yeah. like a heavier, you know, s someone who's been around longer? Or yeah, because ever since they yeah. went online that right. every agent was right. begging for, right. you know, because their messenger bills were so expensive. Go online, go online, go online. And they all tell us it's the worst thing that ever happened financially to their business because we are extremely fair. We do look through the thousand pictures. We are picking people. So if this agent used to get 10 shots a day, now they might be getting four. Yeah. I will say, though, if it's heavy-duty acting, Yeah. I will look at certain agents first, first, because historically for me, they come through and they're known to represent, you know, more serious actors with better right. resumes, where there's other agents, they'll throw anything at us. I mean, it's really We, a we know joke who they are, too, yeah. What? And so, some agents care, have, uh, like, comedians. Like, yeah. I know that... Yeah. Certain agencies like re lean toward that, or right. they have sports agents. You know, it's I mean, so you'll go yeah. with that if it's a sports job first. Yeah, you know, right. And then but I think Terry's first. right because I, I, in my office, I agree with her. We do that if it's uh, a spot without any dialogue. It's Every, it's free game. Everybody's right. in. Yeah. If it's heavy dialogue, right. I know, and right. you can shoot me for it, but I pick my 50 agents that I know I can trust. I go through their pictures first, and if I have spots open, then I'll go to the others as well. But when I know someone has to show up there, it's a relationship. We build relationships. And that's the one thing about the whole computer thing that drives me crazy, because we all got in this business of communication yeah. because we love each other and we want to talk and we want to give our own little views and the insight of what's going on. Hardly anyone talks anymore. But I have, to, I, have to, I have to say one thing that sometimes in the smaller agents, you can find the diamond in the rough. Definitely. Definitely. And, and Definitely. when you do, it's, it's pretty amazing. You could make someone's career, mm -hmm. you know, when you find that one person. So I look at small agents, too. I don't know about them. Oh, we all no. do. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, definitely. Speaking of those 50 agents you mentioned, Jeff, uh, someone asked, other than being with one of those top 50, uh, is, what can an actor do to further themselves in the commercial industry. I think they're looking well, for being being brought in. Oh. Um, I, I've experienced even the smaller agencies that since we just used the top 50 for some reason, I find that um, even the smaller agents have one or two or three or however many really strong working people. So. And my you top know. 50 may not be their top 50. So we all have different views on well, who yeah, we have that That's relate. what makes us yeah. different. Geraldine Cassidy asks, Mary Geraldine Cassidy asks from New York, how many people do you initially see for a spot in general? What, what are the kind of numbers we're talking about? It depends what kind of, how many spots in a commercial. But we usually see, for, for me, uh, one person, probably 45 to 50 people for one character. Yeah. And given that, that easily. given that we've had several cards asking in various fashions, 
Um, if I'm not called in for a commercial, but I know that the casting is going on, how do you feel about no an actor crashing. showing up and no crashing. quote unquote crashing? No crashing. No crashing. No crashing. No crashing. What I've been want? asked, and sometimes if you if you yeah you know, politely, yeah. if you're right for the part, maybe yeah. But if you show up and you're aggressive, it's not going to happen. You might yeah. just happen to be there helping a friend get a ride, <laughs> or something like that. Um, then you ask, but something you ask. Like that. Yeah. I mean, a friend of mine was at a dance thing, and she's like this big choreographer in town, and she called me and she goes, "Can you call the casting director for me?" And I said, "I said no, just go knock on the door, introduce yourself, tell her your credits." Or him, and uh, let them choose. She got in. She booked the spot. Yeah, you can ask. You um, could ask. Yeah. Also, when we ask for something specific, don't lie. Uh, there was something that I was just doing where specifically the people had to be union, had to be. My clients would not tolerate us tafting because they knew that for it was just the look and that it wouldn't get through. And I wasn't in the room the whole day, but I happened to be in the room. And um, the budget was low again, so we had one day to cast this, and the director was there on that day. And people were slating. Non-union. People were slating, and, this, and the session director said to this one girl, okay, profile, please, and she didn't know what he meant. <laughs> Other pro and she looked, and we got through it, and I followed her out the room, and I said, um, excuse me, are you union? <laughs> And she said, no. I said, well, you know, we're not, we're going to have to take you off. And <laughs> like the signs right. outside said, the person who was bringing them in the room said, you have right. to be union for this. And, and also, when you crash an audition, what happens in the lobby for us is if we go over an hour, we have to pay the fine. We have to, we have to pay for, the, for the, over, the overage. So what you're doing is taking away time from other people who are scheduled. And, and that, to me, isn't fair. And when you do sign out, please watch the clock that you are signing out at the right time. Don't go and talk to your friend for 20 minutes and then go and sign out. Because it's really important. It leaves a bad taste in it's, our mouth. It's our responsibility yeah. at the end. And we try so hard uh, to uh, get you in and out within that hour span. Um, there are some days that there's just no getting around it. We're getting behind or whatever. And sometimes we'll just speed it up. Instead of doing it twice, you'll only get to do it once. But um, just really, really, really be careful about stuff like that because that's really important to us. I've uh, heard, had a number of cards as well, people asking almost the same question with different numbers and different forms, but maybe from the inside you guys can give a little insight into this. Uh, it goes something like, I've had 10 callbacks in the last so-and-so months, and I haven't gotten any of them. Am I doing something wrong? No, you're getting callbacks. That's yeah. a good thing. You'll book it. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I was just going to say sometimes it's that means you need a, an adjustment of some kind. And it doesn't mean, oh, you're a pet person. It just means maybe you need to be in an on-camera class. And you the, know? Yeah, and if you keep a journal for yourself and you log in that journal and you see, geez, I'm getting all these callbacks, but they're always for MOS spots without any dialogue. You never get any dialogue-driven spots then I think Franny's telling you yeah. what your instrument needs. It needs to get a refresher course. It needs to know acting 101. Everyone comes from a different space. Everyone gets into SAG at different times. You know, So you might be a little rusty. You might be brand new to it. So if you keep that journal, I think, number one, it tells you who I'm meeting, where I'm going, what I wore, all the acting 101 things and commercial stuff that we tell you to show up at the callback wearing the same bit, the whole bit. But it also lets you see your track record, how you're doing. I also think it's important to know your type and embrace your type. Like the, one of the questions was, what if I'm a little overweight or if I, look I don't look glamorous? or Whatever it is. Where, you know, if you look at, Amer look at commercials, start watching commercials for real. You will see that there are, there are some people who are your type. You know, they're from all across America. And you have to know your type. I have to tell you, so many people just will not embrace their type. How do you determine your type? Even Rocksteady from <laughs> Rocksteady Vibes from Twitter asked that question. We're talking about we're talking about type, but how does one determine one's own type? Well, what do you what do you wear normally? Are you are you conservative? You do you wear the Gap, 
or are you a hipster? But that could change, though. I mean, you could you could evolve you could into dress yeah. Someone. You could dress dress differently. Um, some people naturally look upscale. Right. Some people look more. Uh, and I think your agent class. and yourself will figure out that type, you know, because they're submitting you. So. And look you at know. this room. Look how diverse this room is. I don't think there's one person in this room that couldn't be in a commercial. I could cast a Coke commercial right here. Really. Now. <laughs> I mean, it's really it's it's wonderful. So. We're gonna hold you to that. Uh oh. <laughs> Erase that tape. <laughs> so on the subject, too, besides knowing your type, uh, we're talking about being prepared when we walk in the room, we're, the, knowing what we're doing. What do you notice uh, is, is consistent to people who do very well? What kind, of, what kind of preparation are actors giving themselves to be able to function well in commercials? Just professionalism, confidence. That's all really important. When you walk in, you do your job, and you, 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 you do your thing. They know the script. Yeah. A lot of the times, if you can get a chance to get the script ahead of time. Which we usually do. Uh, it's crazy. So many times I am, I like put it in big bold letters. L have the talent, know the script, look at the script. I mean, and we and set even up if our day accordingly yeah, exactly. sometimes. You, you even know? if it's two lines, just memorize. It makes it so much better for you guys. It makes you look so good. Because then you could really act and not you have to play. memorize or read. Because you can see free. when you're reading. It's free. Go online, download it. Get to know the concept of what's going on when you show up the next day. If they throw a different thing at you, at least you're not going to be jumbled up because you just read it two minutes ago. You know, you're very blessed to be able to have that at your fingertips yeah. to go in there knowing what the concept is. And it's a business. You know, it's a job interview. Come prepared. Right. Your picture, your resume. We all say the same things all the time. Come prepared. And prepared is having confidence and, you know, doing the best uh, that you can to suss out, you know, what this is all about. Oh, and if you don't know, then you get a chance when you're in the room, if you're not embarrassed in front of the whole room in the waiting room, you know, I didn't quite get that joke. You know, is it, how broad can I be? What's the camera frame? You know, is this a comedy? And that's a really important question, I think. Yeah. I think that she touched on something really important to know what your framing is. I mean, if you're the type of person who has a lot of energy and you know it's a close-up, well, you know, like me, I can't talk with my hands, you know? I know I have to plant them somewhere because it's going to be from, you know, tie up or something like that. So you want to be able to know the framing because sometimes your energy will change slightly if it's a long shot, if it's a medium shot, if it's a close-up, you know? Can Just I walk into the scene? You know, do you, can you prepare a little? If we're seeing 50 people, we want you to be special. We want you to bring something different to it. Yeah. And that doesn't mean be Jerry Lewis. You know, it's Hi, lady. Yeah. Lady. <laughs> and the technical question that came in online was, uh, uh, when I slate, be, uh, when I come in, I've, I've read my script, I, I've listened to my instructions, and when I slate, do I walk in the room and slate as myself or slate as the character? Oh, my God. I have, that's my pet peeve. Go. <laughs> Go. As a character. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> as yourself, please. Because then it gets so obnoxious. Well, wait a minute. Yes as, the, yes, as yourself, of course. Wait, no, wait. Of course no, as but yourself. There is an but if it's a, a very sad piece and you're up here when you're slate. No, I'm talking but you like, shouldn't slate like, like that anyway to like, begin with. Uh, like, you know, you know yeah, when exactly. you're slating, it's not like you're on. You yeah, know? It's yeah just, I agree. Just a nice no, warm, it just be yourself. If you were shaking hands yeah. with someone. Hi, I'm so and so. Be I want to because the slate you. is so important. This is when they see your personality. For Sometimes, the very first yeah, time, that's the right. very first time that they see you on tape. That's what they want to see. Just a smile, your personality. You do your thing, and then go into your, the character. Because the all. camera picks up. Every nuance. And if you're saying, I hate to slate in my face. Look at this. What's going on in the room? Or, or you know, any negativity or, oh, here I go. I have to, I have to profile. <laughs> Whatever. I seriously? And it's the same gone. thing at the end. Sometimes our directors will say, uh, make sure you get an end slate on them as well. Right. Okay? You'd be surprised how many people just drop out of a scene. You know, like they think their line is over, so the scene is over. Life, what I usually life do, continues. Yeah, people. exactly. What I usually do is cut the scene and then do the, you know, because if you're in the moment and then you're like, and I hate him, Daniela Scanazzi. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just. <laughs> it, you know, <laughs> it just. I think I'm going to uh, use that. That'll be in the bulletin. <laughs> I love that. What sort of things are you looking for in a resume? 
Lies. My agent tells oh my. me not to list my commercial credits. Is that a good idea? Yes. yes. Do not. Um, okay, here's a good example of why not. Just casting for a car, a Mercedes. Uh, on the, uh, uh, the resume, it said ha she had done an Acura or something like that. And so in the room, there's all this buzz. Oh, we can't pick her. Oh, she's on the bo she's on the table. She's picked at the end of the day. Oh, but you know, we saw that she did an Acura. Well, she had done it five years ago. She didn't have a conflict. She was there. I knew that. But I didn't know about that. I didn't know why they said, where did that come from? How, how did that come in the room? <coughs> so that it could lose you a job. And these ad agency people, they, they do their homework. They, do. they watch commercials. People will come in and it's a little, you know, plays nowhere. You're, so you're begging yeah. agents to get people in. And so the first guy walks in and goes, oh, geez, I loved your work in the so-and-so yeah. commercial. And you're going, now it shocks my God, me that they, knew all, know. they know this about the guy already. Yeah. So you'd be surprised, you know, what what they do on their downtime. They're Googling you or IMDBing you at the callback. All my, they have all their laptops open, their little Macs. They're not even talking to you and they're IMDBing. That's what they're doing. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes. It's a disgrace. <laughs> um, speaking of, you, you mentioned the uh, conflicts before. Someone was asking um, on our online audience, to explain more how conflicts work, how many years before you can audition for a competitor? What's the what's the limitation of this? And again, I think if that it's running, just not clear. if it's running, you can't do another commercial. So the con is just so you hear it. When you get dropped, you could do another commercial. There you go. So when it's up, it's up, and you're fine. Yeah, you don't have to. It was sometimes a spot will play three times, and the ad agency decides, oh my God, we had some legal jargon that's wrong, and they have to pull the spot. That doesn't mean you're released from that spot. They'll Just pay holding they, fees. You know, yeah, if you get a holding so fee. So you have to really touch. Believe me, your agents know. Every once in a while it gets screwed up and oh, an agent submits you and they mm -hmm. shouldn't be. And guess who got picked in his first choice? Right. You. It just, it's always the odds that it always works out that way. And you call the agent you go, hey, Pat, I have this person and I'm putting them on a veil. Uh, I forgot to call you earlier today. Got so slammed here that so-and-so has a conflict. Yeah, so. it happened to me on a pharmaceutical where that person was the only person in the commercial, and um, she had a major conflict. She was booked. She was on set. Oh. And I got a call, and she just happened to be talking to another actor, and it just so happened oh that the producer heard, and they had to shut down production, oh. uh. and they wanted the agent to... to, to they yeah, were suing the agent. Sued. Yeah, on that, Serious when I started business. in the early 80s, I did Kentucky Fried Chicken, and that was the days where they spent a lot of money. They, it was a two-day shoot. They came in, they had the call back, they eaten the chicken. Oh, what a great family we have. Uh, they come to the shoot day. They shot the first one, which was at a real Kentucky Fried Chicken going in and out of the store. The second day was a mock-up on the set. I get a call at 8.15 in the morning. Jeff, yes? Neil is throwing up. He will not eat the chicken. We've done one take. I said, what? What are you talking about? He's a vegetarian. I said, what do you mean as a vegetarian? He came in, he had the callback, he was eating the chicken. He we get blamed for everything. And you we know what? <laughs> Lost the client. I was yeah. going to say, we always Never lose the client. Never worked for them again, and I will remember Neil Gator's name. <laughs> so if you're out there, Neil Gator. He's watching online. <laughs> and let me tell you, this was in the 80s, and they wanted to sue Wilhelmina. They wanted to sue everybody involved. They were so pissed. Or, uh, or someone's in a porn movie. Oh, I had that too. Yeah. Now, I there's nothing too. wrong with that, people. No. <laughs> we just don't cast them. We just don't um, tell them. <laughs> we just don't... <laughs> Michael Faulkner online asks, who? can you, Michael Faulkner? <laughs> Michael who? F-A-U-L-K-N-E-R. We know Michael Faulkner. Faulkner. Oh, okay. Hi, Michael. He's asking, can you talk about how the business has changed since the strike? I've heard that the amount of non-union work is now nearly even or more than union work. I've also noticed myself that there seems to be a lot more of the all backs where they're uh, setting up 50, 100 people at a time at a callback. I already know that you're getting more submissions than ever via online services. How do we stand out given these changes? Uh, uh, we covered how you stand out. You just do your best work and don't worry about how you can be different or 
do something that's going to make you stand out. I think you're putting your energy in the wrong place. And the business has changed. Life has changed. You know, things are faster. The budgets are lower, so we have to see more people. And we less have cars of now. Time. Exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, everything's changed. But they are right. A lot more non-union. Yes. Uh, just to be honest with yeah. you, a lot more non-union, and. Um, I think even as the, uh, I mean, the economy's changing, everything. I think the one thing, if I could just, and I'll just put it out there to the Screen Actors Guild, I really feel the Screen Actors Guild also needs to get on the page and really just do some research about commercials, how when we do a theatrical, we have a, uh, a full budget on theatrical movie, we have a low budget movie, we have a modified low budget movie, we now have the $100 a day movies. I think we really have to investigate possibly doing that with commercials as well because that hospital that only has one little hospital in Kansas City, Missouri, and they can't afford this and they can't afford that, but they want the best actors, and you say, oh, well, then you should pay for it. Well, no, sometimes I remember my wife needing $28 for her medical one year. $28, that's all she needed. And she, she said, I'll do anything. I'll be an extra, I'll be this, extra. I'll be that. So you'd be surprised how many working actors will do anything, any kind of a job, to get that medical. So I just think, and that's my own thing to the Screen Actors Guild, uh, since we do have this forum, I really think it would be very wise to do some research on something like that. I don't know what you people feel. What about feel the state of California? I mean, they never jumped on tax incentives to bring film here. I mean, there's a lot of problems. Um, aside from that, I was going to say in regards to the all back part of that question, I think there's um, a lot of people who are not communicating. So I have a director, I have an advertising agency, like there could be seriously eight people. And sometimes <laughs> they don't get to talk to each other when they're watching the, the casting session. So the producer sometimes won't make them cut down their list because now the director hasn't talked to them, he hasn't even met them yet, he or she, and so then you get 150 callbacks. And maybe there's 12 parts, but it's still... And they it's, all want to be an, out by three. It's yeah. an insanity I, for all of yeah, us. I don't think... I think sometimes it's misinterpreted by the actor, too. Um, I'm not sure what they mean. I mean, years ago, if this person, maybe six people were called back, maybe now 15 to 20 are called back. But actors could also misinterpret this because there's a lot of ethnicities and sometimes multiple parts that characters are being um, considered. considered. Right. So, you know, they'll bring back 30 <laughs> instead of 20. So uh, we don't have the budget to have so many people back with so many characters, I think there's probably a little misinterpretation. And they don't want to go into overtime because then they have to pay overtime in the studios for callbacks and casting and everything. So there might be, maybe it's not really an all back. You talked about, uh, you were talking about sabotage earlier and that could be an example of the way we talk to ourselves about the situation we don't necessarily know what's going on. Mm -hmm. So perhaps. Uh, interesting here from uh, uh, Sean Patrick Murphy in Burbank, uh, asking, he, uh, he says, I've auditioned for campaigns where I've been placed on a veil, but not booked uh, the part. But there are dozens of other much smaller roles and future spots with uh, the other roles in them that I was right for when I watched them on TV. Is there any way to be considered for one of those roles when you've been so close to getting one of the principals? Huh? Well, well they're TV. all principles. That's a tough call. They're I all mean, principles. Yeah. Just because someone doesn't speak doesn't make them not a principal. So exactly. maybe that's a misconception there. And believe me, when when we find someone and they love someone, sometimes they do throw them to other roles. You know, sometimes it's a mix and match. Sometimes I'll give you the blonde if you give me him because they can match up sometimes together. So you don't, you never really know why someone gets a role sometimes. And if you've come in for a part and you got a callback and you've gotten an avail, they are thinking about you for any part. I mean, if they like you, they like you. And if you don't get it, then someone right. else just got and it. And we do that. We do that at the callback. You know, we're at the we table switch there roles. and we're yeah. moving people around yeah. and we'll yeah. lean over and we'll say, okay, well, you didn't like him for that, but now you think we might have to recast on this role tomorrow, but why don't we try this one in that role? And they'll go, oh, really? Hey, you know what? They can do it. They can 
you know. So sometimes that's where our expertise come in as well. And, yeah, and don't take it personal because you came in for one specific role and now you're in for another one. It's not like they didn't like you. They liked you. They just want to put you in another role. It's still featured. You're still featured. You're still a principal. It's the money. You get residuals. That's all that exactly. matters. There are a lot of questions, uh, both online and also from the house here, about how you uh, about places that you view talent, and uh, there are all these different websites. There's a, and do you so many of the questions are which websites do you like to go to? Which uh, casting websites to use? Do you go to actors' individual web pages? Where are you guys going online? I would say 99% of us here are casting for commercials on LA Casting. I'm not saying there's a, a few others that are reputable and if we need something very specific. <laughs> if it's theatrical, I think most of us would say we would go to breakdown services. Um, I, th I know that there's you know some other services that are, that are cool uh, and that if you want, want to submit yourself you know that you can do it but I'd have to say that things are happening so fast we put our breakdowns out on mostly in commercials on LA casting I mean and, some yeah, yeah I'm sorry but but sometimes we get the commercial in the morning and we have to cast the next day or that so afternoon. that afternoon yeah. exactly and um, so we have to work pretty fast Oh, Which yes. is why we don't always have time to go to your individual website. That's what I was just going to say, like a YouTube. There's a rhythm, a very fast rhythm. Oh, yeah. God, I use YouTube so much. Yes, we do, but sometimes if, you know, your reel is online, it's great to have it online rather not than say, I mean, if you really need something very special, mm -hmm. you will go to YouTube. You will it's click It's easier on than it. going to www.barbara.com. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah, that was great. I'm, I'm, I'm listening and also reading because mm -hmm. I'm trying to make sure as many questions that have been asked get uh, some airtime. There's several different questions about having been gone from the business and coming back that you mentioned before. And uh, beside, we've talked about postcards. Uh, are there any other ways that people need to, things that we need to not miss in order to step back into the business having been away? And they, I think these concerns are because of how much the business is changing and how, fa how much faster it is and how the well, it, if it's somebody that has been out of the business for a number of years, number one, I always say, go take a refresher course somewhere. Okay, just because the style of the business has changed drastically. You know, you're not holding up that Pepsi can and smiling anymore. And you'll hear three words at the sessions all the time. Make it small, bring it down, be subtle. Right? Absolutely. Is there anything else we get from our directors every single day, but tell them not to do anything. Make it small, make them subtle. My friend called me the other day, he said, uh, this is one for the books. I slated my name. The guy stopped the camera. He said, could you bring it down a little? That's a little too broad. <laughs> but then you'll see the spot, and they're screaming. Yeah. yeah. The opposite. And then you just go opposite of what it is. And you're, you're Auditioning like, is different than the actual shoot. Yeah. Yeah. So give them what they want. I had one director who literally, I'd go out to the waiting room, and I'd say, he's going to come out here, mm -hmm. and he's going to have a fit. Please, just go in there. He's going to give you a line reading. Who needs to book the spot? How many of you need to book the spot? Do the line reading. Don't be the actor fighting against the line reading. I'm going to show him how it really should be said and blah. And he would rip everyone a new, whatever. So, and he would go on and on and on. And the guy comes in and he does lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, just the way he did it. And guess who books the spot? The guy, and as he leaves the room, he turns to them and says, you see, that's what I'm talking about. This guy knows how to take direction. <laughs> and I thought the ad agency was either going to shoot themselves or shoot him, but they went along with it. The guy booked the spot. He did the same interpretation. How he shot it on the set, as we talked about, is another story. But if someone comes out, we only want you to get the spot. So believe me, we're not going to, like, gaslight you. Yeah. All right? So we're not going to come out there and tell you to go in there and, and do it a certain way, and then all of a sudden you see it on the air. Well, you will. But uh, that it's completely different in that room. Go ahead. You make us look good. That's something that I think that you guys can probably talk to, too, that I think is too often not understood by the talent, and uh, is how much you are relying on us helping you build a reel to show your client. Absolutely. We rely on you 100%. 100%. I mean. We wouldn't have a job without you. Exactly. And so. that that's too often gets lost uh, on the people sitting in the, in the room when they're 
waiting and they start making up stories. Again, the sabotage exactly. that you talked right. about before, that understanding that we're really on a team with you to create the best reel that you can show your clients exactly. and you possibly can hand over. Yep. We've right. got about 15 minutes left here, and I think there's some more questions. I'll keep trying to feed them in, so feel free to keep sending them up online. Oh, look, it just told me there's 15 minutes left. <laughs> Damn, I'm good. <laughs> How good am I? I love that. Good. Does but before we, we do in? that, um, there has been uh, a raffle for people here in the room, and we'll let uh, we'll let the people online enjoy who gets this, the the wonderful book that Terry has written here, My which book. she also did with uh, with Deborah Willett. And uh, it is called Breaking Into Commercials. It's available in bookstores, isn't it still? Oh, definitely. I've seen it around. <laughs> I recommend it, as a matter edition. of fact. So uh, there's someone in the room with the raffle ticket number 499-003. Well, come up and read your book. <laughs> Woo! She sounds so happy. That's great. And I'll bet you can get Terry to sign I that. I could oh, sign it. Oh, What's your name? Yes. Alina. Hi, Alina. Hi. That's Terry. She's the later. author, oh, besides yeah. everything else. Thank you so much. Thanks, Alina. Good. I'm going to have to pull the second one. So I'm going to keep trying to feed in some of these questions. We continue to get from the room and online. Uh, but in the next few minutes, what are some of the things that maybe we haven't covered tonight that you want to be sure to get across here today? Things that you can share with us, whether it's uh, specific experiences or those things that you keep running into with actors or the things that maybe m less experienced people need to know or even the things that you run into from uh, some of your war horses have you seen over a long period of time. Are there things we haven't touched? Um, callbacks, when the whole room is, you know, there's eight people in the room and you come in and they don't pay attention to you. Um, people seem to ask, what, should, what do I do? You know, just take your mark and just wait feeling open and um, alert. And Danielle had referred to something like, don't come in the room and think that you have to entertain anyone or tell a joke. Or I had um, a call back, and they didn't have time to have a proper lunch break. And so they were eating while the actors <laughs> were still coming in. And one actor came in and said, Oh, that food looks really good. Enjoy your lunch. And everyone got so uncomfortable, you know, like just mind your own business, <laughs> take your mark, yeah, and I agree with just you. do Wait. it. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, also Good. on that note, oh, we just did a callback for something, and the, the, fir the, the guy who came in was first choice going in for, for this one part. And he just did not like it that all the, uh, eight, it was eight guys in the room, and they were all on their laptops. And he just was a little smarty pants, mm. and he just said, how's your internet connection? Oh. And yeah. they just passed on him. And I think like, we all agree. We, we, we're up here. We don't me. love it. We hate it. We think it's rude. We think it's disrespectful. But if you don't go with change in life, you're not gonna. You're gonna be standing by the wayside. So I think what they're saying is just, you know, you just gotta embrace what happens to you when you go in the room. We try to introduce you to the room. Mm -hmm. Hi everyone, this is Jeff Gerard. He's here for the role of so and so. Most of the time, they all look up and they go, Oh hi, how are you? What's new? Blah blah blah. Um, you know, sometimes they'll be so buried into their laptops or something. And, like and that. don't but forget, we start callbacks at you know, eight, nine, ten in the morning, and we're there all day. We're there till like five or six o'clock. They're gonna zone out, but it, but don't take it personal, just do your job, and that's it. I'm going with your earlier interpretation that they're looking at me and IMDB. <laughs> that's that's right. <laughs> exactly. And that could happen. That also, could happen. it was in here too, we're talking about callbacks. When we come to a callback, how important is it that we go in and do what we did the last time, or come and look at it first. Well, I, I think again. what happens first is you, you do it the first time and then the director will come in and adjust it. Unless yeah. the director has said, I liked what you did the last time, and remember, right. and then say, could you try something different? But most of the time, they they'll let see you, they'll yeah. see, yeah. Yeah, let's see what, what you got. You're there because they liked what you did. Yeah. So, and, but the good question would be, well, Jeff, you let me do it three ways. And on the callback, you know, you might want to bring that up. So when I, usually what's always kind of nice is I say, okay, and this is so-and-so, and he's here for the role of the, he might just say, I'm going to give a spin on it, and then you guys can redirect me if you'd like to see it another way. 
okay? Or I thought of it a couple of different ways and we'll just give it a spin. So at least they know, okay, he wasn't just out there, you know, talking to the next guy. He's thinking about the spot he, he's trying to get situated and give you a couple of different interpretations to it. Um, also, I appreciate it's hard for you. Like, you don't see us a lot of times on the first call. You come in for a call back and most of the time now, you don't even get introduced to the director. I ask my directors in the beginning, do you want me to introduce you or not? And most of the time they say no. Just, you know, you do the first explanation and then we'll just chime in and readjust. So you're not even really properly being introduced to the director. So that's, again, just the way it is. And um, you have to just go with the flow. Yeah, and sometimes when we do, when, when you do get introduced, it's usually one person in the room. It's not like a, you know, a spot with 12 people. You're not going to be introduced to you know, everybody. Sometimes they want to be introduced to that one person. Mm -hmm. Depends. And I worked with a director who's, who's very well known. He's an actor slash director, and everyone was like jumping out of their skin to be on this callback, and they were just like, I can't wait to go in the room. And, and I said to him, uh, I'm nice to meet you. I'd never worked with him before, um, like Terry did, and how would you like me, would you like me to introduce, oh no, no, don't introduce me, it's fine. Just you do what you did the first time, that was great, I, I don't wanna be introduced. Well, everyone, by the time they were done, was like about to explode. Everyone ran up to him and said, oh, it's such a pleasure to meet you, I'm such a fan of your work. And I, so after about the sixth person, I said, you're gonna get that all day unless I say this is so-and-so and this is so-and-so. Okay, let's try it. They left him alone the rest of the day. Was it Clint Eastwood? Yeah. <laughs> it's I, I, SL. Oh. Sonny Liston. Um, I, <laughs> Saturday Night Live? I, <laughs> I've had actually directors who I didn't know this, but they were shy. And so they would put their hand up to me and say, could you tell them? Oh, wow. Could you could you just tell them to move a little bit? <laughs> and I'm like, I get a lot of that too. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Or, okay, okay. Yeah. The, 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 the actor will be right there, the director and I are right here, and he'll go, oh, tell him to do it again. Um, <laughs> do it again. It's like, it's like a wife ordering through, the, you know, the husband. Tell him to do it again. Oh, my God. <laughs> God. God. No, really. Well, you know, it was strange because, um, you know, at, uh, I don't know if they still do it, but like at the casting underground, there used to be, and I, I didn't work there, I had a couple of callbacks there, but it was so strange because oh, they'd yeah, be the behind yeah. this uh, um, oh, oh, yeah, scene yeah, or whatever, and you'd TV never, screen. and it would be, the voices would be coming out, yeah. you know? And so this director was so young, and he, I was like about to lose my mind, and I finally said, Okay, great. You know, and these it, people are like, well, where's these yeah. voices coming from? Or you hear them laughing that. in the back, not about the actor, but about something else. Well, as an actor, you're in the room, you might think they're laughing about my yeah. performance or something. So finally, I just said to the director, can I talk to you for a second? Yeah. And he's all of like 25. I don't think he's shaved even uh, yet. And so I said, look, these guys, they shower, they shave, they race to get here, they lie to their bosses to be here. They just want to <sighs> shake your hand. They just want to say hi. Oh, you mean I can talk to them? <gasps> oh, you mean I can wow. be out there with you? And I wow. said, yeah. And then I found out it was his like second spot he had ever done, which was fine, because everyone learns, right? We all learn, whether it be a casting person, an actor, a director. So he was learning the process too. But the biggest thing is sometimes you're in these studios or these situations where you might not be so comfortable, you can't let it affect your work. Because that would just freak me out if I heard people talking from behind a screen oh, no, it's, it's, and no one. It was so rude, you know. For those of you at home, the camera operator just asked Jeff to keep it small because he's yeah. he's in tight on him. Well, there are some directors who really want some info, like Terry was saying earlier, want some information on the actor. So that's nice. You have a picture in the resume, but you know, I'm like a like most of us here, I love actor stuff, and I'm always like, you know, oh, they were on the love boat in the, you know, in the 70s, you know, so, so I have, you know, a few directors who are like, oh, that's cool, the whole room goes, blah, 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 blah. and then I have one director who goes, Francine, who gives a shit? And I'm like, I, I, I just thought we maybe, do, yeah, I do, and you know, we, we, do. we do, we try to keep it human. For you guys, we really do. They just do. try to embarrass me. <laughs> but no, they, I mean, the others give a shit. Yeah. Right. A darn. 
Let me jump in with a little bit of uh, housekeeping here on two things. Uh, first, joyous that we have an online winner for the book. You'll be happy to know, Terry. Oh, did you bring this thing two? Is flying out the door. <laughs> uh, this is uh, Charles Tobias or Tobias. I think you probably say Tobias. How do you guys say that? Tobias. Thank you. Tobias. I knew that. He's the online winner, so we're going to be uh, emailing you, Charles, hey. and uh, for your address, so we can get your address and send to him. And also, I read a question from. Uh, Sean Patrick Murphy earlier tonight, and I used his name because we're trying to use people's names and their locations to bring the people online into the room more. And because we're in a, uh, a community here, we're a union, and uh, we're all supportive of one another. And I misread his question a bit, so I'd like to share this that he wrote in. Uh, he says, uh, first I want to say, I love this online thing. It's great. However, my question was changed slightly, and my <laughs> name was used, and my name was used. Oh. I am aware that all the roles are principal roles. The question was, how can I say that I'm interested in being considered for the other smaller principal roles? A few of these casting directors know who I am, and now I uh, and think that I don't realize what a principal role is. I, I know who he is, too. He's a really bright guy and a fantastic actor. He's a fantastic actor, so I, I don't mind saying this. Uh, he also says, I just feel the actual question should probably be used so as not to misrepresent the actor submitting it online. Aside from that, again, I love this online panel thing. You guys are doing a great job. And before you answer it, I just want to personally apologize. I'm having a hard time seeing it. If I misrepresented the uh, question, it was a human error. And I'm, I'm just <laughs> trying to be a good, uh, a good union member here and do my very best. So the question was, how can I, how can I ask to be considered for some of the other roles? Is that possible? Honestly, you cannot. I mean, the deal is is that you have to be able to trust that the casting director and all those other people, especially if you've had a call back and he got he said he got put on a veil or something mm -hmm. like that. But I mean, you remember there's so many actors out there and we're putting it out to agents so they're making choices and then we pick the people that we think are right for the job. So you have to trust us that we're thinking of you in multiple parts. You know, and so we, we, yeah. there's actually a thing on LA Casting where we could move you into another part. So you have to trust us to do that. And um, Yeah, they might be better for the magician guy exactly. instead of the boyfriend. And even when we bring you in, if we moved you, they might see you in another part. They, yeah. they right. want to pick their cast. Yeah. They are looking, so you need to leave it up to them. Or that day at, uh, at the actual session, we can say, you know what, can you do me a favor? Can you come back at one? Because we're doing yeah. another role yes. that you're so right, right for, and I can't do it now because it's a whole new setup. So, and they'll say, oh, sure, no yeah, problem. Yeah, just leave it up to us. We, we, we know what we're doing. And believe me, if you have the callback, as Francine uh, has said, uh, we know and we're going to juggle people all over yeah. the place. We've got about five minutes left here, and I want to make sure that we cover a few things just before we leave. One is that you guys talked about being, pre we were talking earlier about being prepared, and you're talking about getting that refresher course. Jeff, uh, Francine, I know you teach a class. Uh, when is that? Yes, I do teach a class. I teach a class with Judy Kane, who's actually sitting in the front row, who's a SAG member and fabulous actress. Uh, and what a hat. What a hat. this year on Ma uh, Mad Men and uh, num numerous other things. Um, yeah, it's a commercial class. And people think, you know, what is a commercial class? In the old days, a commercial class, seriously, because I know I took them, we, I thought, and most of the time they were, was a bite and chew. You know what I mean? Was how to slate was not really a serious acting class. And I, I know, I'm, I'm sure s some of you have taught and do teach, um, you know, commercial classes. We have also uh, a pro class. We have an improv class mm. with Cynthia Segetti, who's, you know, teaches all the, has taught all the groundlings and improv people around town. I just think, you know, whether you take my class or somebody else's class, I mean, you've got to know what you look like on camera. You've and that's really, really important. I mean, uh, when you take a class, um, and I, I give a class only three times a year, but what I love, I've been doing it for like 25 years, what I love about it is I always learn from you as well as hopefully you're learning from me. 
Um, the biggest thing is when you take a class, people don't even realize, bring four or five different changes because in my class, you're up at least four times a night, if not five or six. So if you're up that many times, you want to see, as Francine said, what you look like on that camera. How does my hair look? Do these glasses look right? Uh, if I have to wear my glasses because I have to read the cue card, do I have to get the non-glare? Do I have to tilt my head a certain way? You know, so you start to log all this stuff into the computer bank, and that's what a class is really worth uh, doing. Not only that, is learning the new styles, you know, the subtleties in acting, doing so little that you're going to be noticed. I, too, teach a class, and um, you have to be able to, I treat it like a scene, and you have to be able to get up on that mark and immediately give the environment a very specific feel. You have to connect and find the beats and moments and texture in it. So it's more than just coming alive when you say the words. Um, you have the, the ad agency <clears throat> is using you as a vehicle for their sell. And um, it's not in vogue for you to sell anything. <clears throat> And so what you have to be able to do is understand how to interpret the copy and then use what they give you, whether it be a script or an improv, to let out who you are and how you feel. Because they're looking for an opinionated, empowered person to um, say whatever they're saying. And you learn techniques that if, say, you're having a bad day, your stomach hurts or you had a car accident or, you know, God forbid, or you have something going on with your family, you, you get to like, okay, I'm not feeling so great. If I just do this and this and this, I can, you know, I can focus. I can stay with it. It's still, it's a job. Danielle, we got a minute. Do you want to plug a class? I, I'm sorry, I just fell asleep for something. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she goes out and has witty. fun. No, 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 I don't. She has a life. Um, I'm teaching a workshop too, uh, and my panel is going to be me, an agent, and a director. I think that's going to be fun, and I'll let you guys know when that happens. And just uh, to round that out, uh, I don't teach a commercial class. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, someone asked me, I've been, I, I do nicely commercially. I'm very grateful for the. Uh, work I've gotten commercially, and it, and it kind of took off at some point. And someone said, what, what did you do? What have you done? And, and mostly, I just uh, I always emphasize working on your acting, studying acting. I, I, and I do teach a, a scene study class, scene study okay. technique class. But whether it's my class or whether it's another studio, someplace that you can go as an actor where you're challenged and where you're also uh, in a safe place, uh, I, where you're getting support and where you're getting uh, a bar to jump over. So uh, I think it's, it's really important just to keep active. This is your craft. This is what you do. Be in place. Yeah. Be in place. Do, yeah. Do and that's place. really important what he said. Be in a safe place. There's a lot of negativity, not only in this business, but in the world. Don't buy into it. All right? There's, there's plenty of that. Just always be in that safe haven. And the bar is really important. Those were two very, very good things. Yes. Thank you. Well, listen, I know that we're coming up on the uh, very last moments here. I want to personally thank all four of you guys. I'm really moved that you came thank and you. did this. Thank you. thank you. And I just want to thank you guys for being here in the room. And I'm very grateful to Simon and uh, Screen Actors Guild for uh, letting me uh, facilitate for you guys. I hope you at home online enjoyed as much as we did here. Thanks so much. Thanks for coming, everybody. Thank, thank you. you. It's a beautiful room. Yeah, it's beautiful. Fabulous. <laughs>